So what's going on? Welcome back to JB Reviews. Today we are going to do a Weight Watchers TE episode. Now I did change the name not to get in trouble with the weight loss program. So it's Truck Edition, which is TE. Now what I normally do is I show you guys around an RV. And then what I'll normally do is I'll show you the numbers on the spreadsheet for a truck. Now I'm going to use three trucks today. I'm going to use the numbers that you see off to the side. And today, since the pandemic is going on, I'm going to show you guys a virtual tour of the RV since one, I could not find this RV even where I'm at, so it wouldn't have mattered. But also, I mean, I think that it's, it's actually kind of saves me some time on this video, that way it's not too long. Now I'm going to use a F450, which is a 2020. I'm going to show you guys around this Ram 3500. Now I did these videos already, so if you want to go and see the walk around of these trucks, feel free to go back there. I'll put them in the description below. That way you guys can look at them. But in all of my videos, I always show you guys the payload number. That way you have an idea what the options and features are and how we got to that number basically. I don't know if I ever explained it to you guys. Whenever I do my reviews on trucks, the reason why I show you guys the window sticker is one, because I want you guys to see the options and how it affects that payload number. Okay, just, just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and get into it. So this is a huge, huge toy hauler, 45 feet long to be exact. Front living, which is one of my favorite setups has a kitchen obviously and it has two flip out bar stools as a freestanding dinette and it has counter space counter space and decent amount of counter space around the island not much around the stove you walk up these steps bathrooms off to the right huge garage so let me just show it to you guys like this so really nice colors materials looks like from this uh, 3d view you have really large, looks like these are all recliners because you have these cup holders. So I do not think these can turn into beds. Really nice cabinetry, large television. If I were to spin around, you can kind of see just a better view of this, the whole layout. Really, really large. This is gonna be a wide body toy hauler. Most of them are wide body. So they're, they're gonna be eight and a half feet wide. But as I mentioned, you have counter space, this is a lot of counter space right here, and you have a nice size uh, kitchen island too. Freestanding dinette, bar stools. You also have a pretty decent sized pantry also, but really nice lighting. Uh, looks like this may even light up too. And you looks like you have LED lights, you have lighting on that trim piece, and you can get three AC units on this RV too, so keep that in mind. So you, this should keep you pretty comfortable, even on those hot days. Bathroom is closed, but you do have one off to the side. Now, I have never seen this before. This is like a tilt slide system, I think that's what it's called. Let's just go down real quickly. This is called a tilt slide system for the bed. It's like a bed tilt slide system. So basically the bed goes up, that way you can get your toy inside of here. And when you put this bed down, this is basically your bedroom. So you walk right into your bedroom. And if you step down, you can kind of see your, this is where the washer and dryer hookup would go, but this would also be a closet for your clothes. Also have storage for clothes. And then you can put a television, which pretty much is already connected here. And you can pretty much put a very large toy. Now you do have a door to go outside. And it looks like this can also turn into like a back porch too with doors too, with glass doors, which is really cool. But take a look at this slide system, isn't that cool? I've never seen that before in my life. So big shout out uh, for, I'll put your name right here for showing this floor plan to me. Cause like I said, I've never seen it before. I've heard of Heartland before. I've actually was gonna buy a gateway prior to us buying our RV. I mean, we've looked at so many RVs. That'd, that'd be a good video so you guys can see how many floor plans that we looked at before you landed on the one we have. So now that you guys have an idea of the floor plan, Let's take a look at the numbers. Now this trailer has a 20,000 pound gross vehicle weight. Every truck that you saw, they all have 20,000 plus towing capacities. Now the dry weight of this trailer is gonna be 16,720. Now as far as the hitch weight goes, now here, here's the deal. I did 22% of this number and it came out at 4,400 pounds. I think this is a safe number. I think 4235 is pretty high. I, I can't imagine. Now this trailer already has a generator, all that good stuff. Now if you were to add fresh water, this has a 100 gallon fresh water tank, that could affect this number. 
because I'm not sure what that tank is under the RV. So if you're buying this RV, that might be a good question for you to ask the dealership. Because if you're going to put 100 gallons worth of water on the front, that's six or 700 pounds, if not more than that, I think. It might be more than 700 pounds. It could be 800 pounds of water that you could potentially be carrying around and that could go on your pin weight, depending on where they put that tank under the RV. But as you guys can see, cargo carrying capacity is 3232 which is pretty decent for a toy hauler. You have three axles, 7,000 pounds. You have two standard air conditioners, 15K. And you also have two propane tanks. You have a 50 amp and you have an 80 amp converter. And there's a few other things if you like take a look at it. Now what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna pull the numbers for this Silverado here. I, I have a spreadsheet that I normally use for this, so hang tight here. All right, so as I mentioned, I have spreadsheets for all three trucks now. This is gonna be the 2020 Chevy Silverado 3500 LTZ with a Duramax. Now, take a look at the gross fuel equate rating. Gross fuel equate is 12,100 pounds. You're gonna have a payload capacity. Now, this is the truck's sticker. This is where I got this number from, 3,761 pounds. If you subtract the GVWR in the payload, that's gonna always give you the curve weight. So just keep that in mind throughout this video. Now, one thing I wanna to mention to you guys is this. I use 410 pounds for uh, passengers. Now that's 200 pound guy, 130 pound wife, and then the rest is kids. I have small kids, so if you wanna up this, feel free. Now, as far as cargo goes, this truck, you would have to put a hitch inside of here. So configure your hitch. It's going to be about 100 to 150 pounds plus whatever other cargo you put inside the truck. It gives you a total uh, add-on to your truck of 660 pounds. Now, right out of the gate, I use 19,200 pounds because no one's riding around in a unloaded trailer. So, this assume you have a toy back there. Now, as I mentioned, typically when you put toys inside of a toy hauler, it should lower that hitch weight. But... You can't go by that because every toy is different and who knows, it, it just depends. I probably shouldn't even mention that because it gives someone a hope to try to tow this trailer with a truck like this and you should. Because as you can see, you are exceeding your payload capacity and your gross fuel weight significantly. Now you are under on gross combined weight rating and you are under on your towing capacity, but you're just way over on the payload. I would never tow this trailer with this truck now at the end of this video i'm going to show you two trucks to consider so as you guys can see which most of you guys already knew this truck was not going to work so let's go ahead and minimize this down and let's hop over to the ram 3500 now are you guys thinking because it's a dually it's going to pretty much be okay unfortunately for this truck too you're going to be over on your payload and here's why if you get it in a three quarter ton which is a 2500 the payload capacity could be anywhere between 1,400 pounds and 1,600 pounds. Now keep in mind, the reason why it's so low is because it has a diesel and it only has a 10,000 pound GVWR. If you step up to a mega cab one ton single rear wheel, it has a 12,300 pound GVWR compared to a crew cab one ton with a short bed, which is only going to have a GVWR of 11,800 pounds. Now the mega cab dually and the long bed dually crew cab have the same GVWR, but the mega cab's a lot heavier so you lose some of your capacity to have this truck so just keep that in mind so if you're going to get a mega cab you're going to have to look at a big horn and you're going to have to watch your options you may not be able to get a spray your bed liner you may not be able to get a sunroof and things like that you may have to take those things off of your list or you may have to just skip the high output because the high output is going to actually add about two to three hundred pounds because of the eyes and transmission. So same story here on the weight. The only thing I did differently is, this truck does come from the factory with the hitch. So when they weighed this truck at the factory, that hitch was back there. So that's the only reason why I knocked 100 pounds off here. But as you guys can see, you are still over on your payload capacity and your GVWR. Now this truck has a 14,000 pound gross fuel weight but it's so heavy it's 92 not basically 9300 pound truck so it just eats away at your capacity so keep that in mind that's not a big payload number for a dually i mean you want at least 5500 pounds or more so if you are looking at ram trucks you don't necessarily need a high output the high output gives you that eyes and transmission which is better for towing but i think the high output is more 
so better for like a base model truck like a tradesman or a big one because it gives you so much more capacity to play with so last but not least now that you guys have seen the numbers for these two trucks we have the big boy ford f450 xlt low trim level and we are still over are you guys surprised now when i first cracked the door open on the f450 this was the biggest drawback for me this truck again is so heavy now these trucks, a uh, pickup truck is not gonna go over 14,000 pounds because I think it puts it in a different class. Feel free to put that in the uh, comment section if you know more about that. Now, taking a look at the payload capacity, 4,860 pounds. Now, this truck did not have a hitch from the factory, so you're gonna have to assume an additional hitch. But with 410 pounds of passengers, 250 pounds of cargo, this trailer puts it over the limit for the payload. Now, at the end of the day, what do you do? Here's what I'll tell you. If you're looking for a trailer this size, odds are the number could be less, but this is worst case scenarios here. I'd rather be way under than over. Even by just a little bit of a margin, I wouldn't be under. That's just my opinion. That's why even for myself, if I ever decide to go bigger in fifth wheel, I'm probably gonna have to go with lesser trim package or I'm gonna probably have to go to a dually if I gotta have the limited again. And that kind of sucks because I really do like the limited package that comes on the Ram trucks. But as you guys can see, all three trucks really are not capable to tow this trailer because it puts you over your payload, over your GBWR. Now that may not be a problem to you. Now I'm not gonna tell you what to do. You guys have to make your own decision. I'm just here to show you the facts. The fact is, this is a big boy toy hauler. Now I'm gonna show you guys two trucks that I would use. And I'm gonna use Ram because it's gonna be a lot easier to build them. So let's just take a look at 3500. For a trailer this size, I would choose 100% an 8 foot bed. 100% 8 foot bed. I want a long truck to tow this bad boy. And I would, hey, I'm going to get the high output because I feel like I want it. Four wheel drive is a must for me. I've already had to use mine a couple of times. And I'm going to use a 410 axle just because why not? So as you guys can see, 5,500 pounds of payload capacity in the Bighorn. Now moving up to the limited long bed, you still have decent capacity so let's go back to one of those spreadsheets here let me show this to you really quickly now we'll just use this one for as an example so 50 if you were to put 5500 pounds here you still are really close on the numbers but you still have margin now let's just play let's go worst case scenario i mean this is worst case i mean you're still in a good spot with this truck. I mean, not many people are riding around with that heavy of people inside of a car, unless there's a bunch of dudes in there. But for the most part, 5,500 pounds or more is what you're gonna really want. Now, if I was looking at a fifth wheel trailer this size, here's the truck that I personally would buy. Now, this is a 45 foot long fifth wheel. I think I would buy a cabin chassis, 100%, and here's why. Cabin chassis is going to give you a 444 axle ratio. Crew cab is available. And the good news is they added a Laramie and a limited package to this truck. So you can still have comfort features inside of a cabin chassis. Now you can get a 172.4. You're just going to have to pick a 3500. So go to a 173 or, or if you want, if you want to go crazy, you can go to 197, which I mean, I would never do that big. Transmission. There is no manual transfers. I don't know why I did that. I think you can only get the cabin chassis with the eyes in. Now, just keep in mind, the Cummins for cabin chassis are detuned. So you're not gonna have that thousand pound bit of torque, which you don't really need, honestly. It's just a sales gimmick at the end of the day. But let me just show it to you here. So you can see the Tradesman's, whoa, 7,300 pounds of payload. 10, that, now this is a 5,500. We don't want 5,500s. We just, we're just going to, we're going for 4,500 Laramie. That's what we need right there, guys. Now, if you want to get the 5,500, you can get a 488 axle. So that might be a good option to have. And you can actually increase your towing capacity significantly too, if you need a, to like a 25,000 pound fifth wheel or something like that. But guys, that's the truck I would purchase there. I believe that you can also get, I don't see it here, but you can also get a limited as an option too. 
So just keep that in mind. But I hope this was helpful, guys. If you want me to do more videos like this, feel free. I will go on and look through my truck videos and see which ones I uh, have done. Because, hey, you know, I was very surprised by this. I wasn't too surprised by this because I've, I kind of did the numbers on this a long time ago and noticed that because of payload so low. But on the F450, I would have to skip this truck. I would go for F350 to tow a toy hauler this size if you got to have a bed and stuff like that. If you don't want to do like a... If you don't want to do like a cabin chassis and put your own bed on it, you don't have to get like a pickup bed, but you can get like a like a, a flat bed. I can't remember what they call them, but I'll put it right here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But again, thank you guys again for watching this video. I hope it was helpful, and I will see you guys really soon.